Hey everybody, this is Jason from LeanBodyMovement.com and today for this week's interview we've got Mr. Adam Steer. You know, he's been a coach all over, her, literally all over people. Um, he's based out of uh, Quebec City and up in Canada, one of another awesome fitness professional up in Can Canada. Canada. Yeah. There, there are a bunch of awesome fitness pros up there that I look up to so much and it's awesome to have you on the call. Adam, thanks so much for being on the call. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, and so let's go ahead and talk about um, a few things. First of all, Adam, you've been featured on LiveStrong.com. You're featured on a, a website called BodyWeightCoach.com, and it's really, uh, we're going to talk about one thing in specific today, and that's uh, Body Weight Burn. Um, and your product that you just actually had come out this early this summer, actually, I think it was actually, you had multiple things going on with it. You had something going on in the spring, even the fall, I think, as far as I'm, I know, because there was a bunch of talk going on, and I saw a bunch of your, your stuff on YouTube and everything, so it's been really cool. So before we get into kind of your, the rationale that you use with body weight workouts, um, let's go ahead and talk just a little bit. Why don't you give us a little bit of your story as far as how you got in the fitness industry and, and that sort of thing. Sure. Um, well, I'll, I'll try to give the short version because sometimes I go on for like 20 minutes just talking about this. So um, I, I would attribute all of it to my grandfather. Um, my grandfather, when I was a teenager, he got me a membership to his gym and in his words, it was to keep me out of trouble, which it certainly did. It certainly helped. Um, but what he really did was kind of like start shaping my entire career, really. Um, he's the guy that sparked my fascination for health, fitness, strength, conditioning. And like even beyond the gym, though, he's, he's a guy that kind of made me interested in movement and sport and performance as well. Um, there was really no one else in my family who was interested in in sports or fitness or anything. Um, you know, it's my grandfather who um, signed me up for baseball when I was a kid, and then when I was old enough, signed me up for hockey. Because um, it, you know, in Canada, if you don't play hockey, you're kind of weird too. So, you know, he made sure that that I had my fingers and all that kind of stuff when I decided I want to play football. Even though I'm kind of short, he, you know, he encouraged me, got me signed up. I ended up playing football in, in uh, high school. Um, and, uh, yeah, just like, you know, at every turn, he, he was always there to encourage me in my, my interest for this kind of thing. Um, and I, I think without that, I would have been a bit of a mama's boy. You know, my, my mom wasn't into sports at all. She was into, like... In more intellectual pursuits, which you know, I got that from her side as well. I read a lot and I study a lot and, and all that kind of stuff. But I don't think I would have got the sports and the kind of more like movement oriented stuff if it wasn't for my grandfather. So that, to make a long story short, all that ended up in um, one of the sports that I did when I was younger was uh, alpine skiing. And when I was 18, I actually took my certification to become a ski instructor. And uh, that, that kind of like gave things a jump start. I actually started full time in the ski industry when I was 19. And uh, at that full time in the winters until just a few years ago, I actually ended up uh, being ski school director for a really big ski school here in Eastern Canada. And um, that, that kind of whole adventure in the ski industry um, gave me the chance to work with athletes as well as a ski coach and and that kind of opened the door to being able to train them with their strength and conditioning as well in the off season and and that was cool because that kind of combined two big passions that I had which were skiing and also like the whole um, strength and conditioning diet um, uh, you know, performance side from the, the other, you know, not, not just the sport, but from the other side of the coin. So that, that was really cool. That was kind of like a game changer for me. And that led to personal training, like with the general public as well. And then when I eventually retired from the, um, the ski industry, I went into that full time and, uh, you know, it's just training clients just loved it. It's just such a cool thing to do. 
Um, and then I realized, you know, if I, if I wrote these programs so they had a bit of like a, a wider application, they would kind of be a bit broader and, and meet more people where they are, um, that I'd be able, be able to touch even more people with my programs. And, and that's when I discovered, you know, that I could reach people over the internet and deliver these programs over the internet. And it just kind of, the rest evolved from there. So, and, you know, and that's what I do full time now. That's awesome. I think it's really cool because, um, you know, you actually, I've read about you quite a bit now, and um, I've noticed that you actually taught, you actually instructed and coached uh, professional skiers, correct? Yeah, well, I, I, I coached some pretty high-level athletes, but I also was um, one of the top course conductors for the Canadian Ski Instructors Alliance, so I got to travel all over the country actually training, uh, training new ski instructors, but also training... Um, pretty high level ski instructors to get their next levels of certification so yeah I, I was pretty pretty deep into it cool and you also um, do you, what was your latest um, contribution to live strong if you don't mind me asking I can't even remember that was a couple of years ago I, yeah. I did a couple of articles for them but I, it had something to do with body weight exercise I think oh. it was a, a body weight like um, fat loss circuit or something like that I'd have to like try to dredge it up yeah and you know they got a pretty big database so you could probably if you're listening to this you could probably go uh, look at that and take a look at what uh, awesome stuff he's got out there so that's a really cool app yeah uh, so, i mean if you if you want just like tons of body weight um articles and instructionals and stuff like that just go to bodyweightcoach.com we've got years and years worth of body weight related articles and all kinds of other stuff too sweet that's really cool so bodyweightcoach.com, so sweet. Um, now let's go ahead and get into some of the concepts I personally have been really curious about learning more about, and that uh, really has with body weight burn and the cardio flow concept that you've got going, is, and, and also the carb cinch system. If you wouldn't mind talking to us, to us about those two main concepts and also anything that ties into that. Sure, okay, well, um, Cardio flow is kind of my my alternative to things like jogging or stationary bike or some of the more like traditional or conventional um, types of quote unquote cardio exercise out there. Um, and, and I'll tell you about a little bit about the reasoning behind um, the creation of this cardio flow um, type routine. Uh, first of all, I really believe in waving intensity so having the appropriate intensity for the day um, I, I believe that you have to train very intensely in order to uh, increase your metabolism so you can be burning fat over an extended period of time but the problem with very high intensity exercise is you can't unless you're very elite you can't really be doing that every day but what you can be doing is something like uh, low, lower intensity cardio exercise, which actually improves your recovery and allows you to keep burning calories even while you're, you're promoting recovery, getting ready for your next high intensity session. Um, so, I mean, I could just have people do jogging or get on a, a stationary bike or an elliptical machine or go walking or whatever, but I, I, I don't love those kinds of exercises. I don't hate them. I don't love them though because they're very repetitive. Um, and the problem with that is one, it can get a little bit boring unless you're someone that really likes to run or, or bike or whatever. And the other thing is, is you expose yourself to repetitive stress injury. Um, and, and you know, when you're, when you're pounding, you know, jogging or whatever, doing the same motion over and over and over again, your joints, your connective tissue, your muscles get used in a very specific way over and over and over again, which can cause problems down the road. So my solution to this problem has been to create what I call body weight flows or cardio flows, which take a bunch of body weight exercises and very kind of strategically picked so that they move your body in every range of motion like every every kind of like different variation of the way that you can move your body is worked into one of these flows and we link them I, I pick the exercises so that they link together very fluidly so it's almost like you're dancing from one body weight 
um, exercise in one position to the next. And I'll string like six to eight of those together. You go through that string and then you just start it over again. And um, like I said, they, they, they all fit together almost like a jigsaw puzzle. So you can really get into almost like a trance as you start to feel the, the transitions from one movement to the next. So A, it's a, it's a heck of a lot more interesting than just doing one repetitive movement over and over again. B, it takes your body through a much bigger range of motion. So you actually end up recruiting more muscle mass, um, stimulating the nervous system more, and thus burning more calories. Um, and it, it also um, it, it um, prevents that repetitive stress that I was talking about earlier. Cool, and I like that night. One thing I also uh, couldn't help to uh, really like to bring up is I know that you and, and my listeners, everyone that's listening, you know very well on who uh, Tyler Bramlett, the Garage Warrior, is. Yeah. And Adam and Tyler have been doing some awesome work together, and you know that that really cor correlates. And I like how you guys really mesh your your rationales really mesh together. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, we work well together. We got it's pretty similar philosophy. That's cool. And because uh, movement is king. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And without a doubt. And um, you know, you guys got CT fifty, um, a brand new program with just loaded full of awesome probably a lot of these concepts within the workouts um, that'll be coming up soon here. yeah I'll yeah be it's excited to still that. still top secret but yeah that's coming soon right, right. <laughs> yeah my apologies well, I no, no, no no it's good you leak some information it's, good. it's a leak it's good it's like apple they kind of leak out little bits right 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 <laughs> well we won't tell you what it means all right, yeah. all right. <laughs> um how about the carb cinch system would yeah. Like okay. Well, um, yeah. Carb sync is basically the diet that I wrote to go specifically with the body weight burn exercise, um, component. Um, and, and it basically just uses my diet philosophy, which is built around synchronizing, thus carb sync, synchronizing the types and amounts of carbs that you eat to the type of exercise that you're going to do on a specific day. And it's all based on the principles of, um, you know, how exercise affects something called insulin sensitivity. Um, and in case, you know, any, anyone listening doesn't know what insulin sensitivity is, uh, insulin is basically a storage hormone. So when you eat something, uh, your body is going to release the appropriate amount of insulin into your system to pick up the nutrients and the energy from the food that, that you've absorbed and then transport that somewhere into your body. Some kind of cell is going to store those nutrients and that energy. Um, now, the more insulin sensitive you are, the more the chances are that all that nutrition is going to go and get stored in muscle cells and other lean tissue. When you're um, insulin resistant, chances are that stuff's going to get stored in your fat cells. Um, and the way that you exercise and the type of exercise you do can make you more insulin sensitive. And what we try to do with CarbSync is synchronize the days when you're going to be most insulin sensitive with the types of carbohydrates and the amounts of carbohydrates that you're going to eat. And then on, on days where you're doing something like cardio flow, for example, is, is not going to increase your insulin sensitivity um, that much. It, it will a little bit, but not like some of the other components in the program. So on those kinds of days, we're going to take advantage of that and we're going to go more low carb on those days. Um, so A, you're kind of optimizing um, the foods that you eat to the type of exercise you're doing so that you get the most results. But the other thing that, that's nice in a program like that is it also gives you some variety. So it's not the same day in and day out. You can kind of look forward to different types of days and different like favorite foods that go with those kinds of days. So I think it's fun from that kind of point of view as well. Cool, and I like that because it's all in the name. You know, it's people don't really understand carbs and we're gonna dispel this myth here out of well for us here in a second, but people just have this wrong connotation with carb. I think our I think the mainstream is really um, kind of almost tainted um, that whole concept of consuming carbohydrates and that they're all bad and 
no matter what we do, it's always going to be stored in the wrong way. So with that, how about we go and dispel that myth, um, Adam? How about we uh, dispel the myth that, you know, basically a lot of people just don't understand carbs. So people just know them as, as the storage kind of nutrient and, and, and we shouldn't have carbs, period. Um, so how about, how? and plus, why don't you point out some ways that we can time those carbs in ways that will be good and beneficial? Yeah. Well, I, I think there's a danger in vilifying any food group. I mean, especially when we're talking about one of the three major macronutrients, right? We got protein, we got fats, and we got carbs. As soon as you say one of those is bad, I mean, that that's a whole like huge chunk of food that you're telling people they can never eat, right? So just from a psychological standpoint, it's kind of, it, it's a bit untenable in the long term. Like how are you really going to cut carbohydrates out of your diet for the rest of your life? Um, and I think most people aren't willing to do that. And, you know, this, the second part of that is they don't have to. Like, there's nothing inherently wrong with carbohydrates. Um, certainly, you have to be careful with them. Um, just like you have to be careful with the other two macronutrients. You know, that you if you eat too much protein, for example your body will, you know, learn to turn protein into sugars and just replace, you know, the carbohydrates with converted protein. So, I mean, you eat too much of anything and it's, and it's going to cause a problem. Fats, for example, fats are kind of like the, the um, you know, the, the charmed food right now. Um, they don't have a lot of hormonal impact. Like, they're not going to raise your insulin a lot. So people are like, oh, I can eat as much fat as I want, I'm not going to get fat, but you know, that's crap. If you eat enough fat and you eat enough calories, you're going to store it as fat, you know, but people are like, people latch onto the simplistic idea of, of, okay, well, carbs raise insulin, insulin stores fat. I can't eat any carbohydrates. So I, I think we have to just, I, we have to be careful about oversimplifying anything the 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 starting point for everything is if you eat too many calories you will put on fat if you eat less calories than what you need you'll take it off from there you once we optimize the number of calories then we can use things like carbohydrates fats uh, proteins strategically to make fat loss faster or slower so let, let's go back to carbohydrates because I'm, I'm kind of like going all over the place here but basically if, if you're if you've got your calories dialed in you're eating about the right amount of, of calories that you need to be eating in order to to lose fat strategically what you can be doing to optimize that then is when you're for example on on a day where you're not doing any kind of resistance training you're not doing any kind of muscular training you're doing more cardio flow or what I call an afterburn, which is high intensity interval training. You might wanna stay lower carb, um, not bump the insulin up. That way, because what happens is when insulin goes up, you actually lock fat in your cells. So on those days where you're doing like the, the cardio flow or the afterburn, your goal is really to let as much fat get drawn out of your cells to be used as fuel as possible. So let's keep the insulin low, keep the carbohydrates low on those days. but on the days when we're doing what I call metabolic muscle workouts and body weight burn, our goal is, is not definitely not to be putting on fat, but what we can do is up the carbs on those days because we're drawing them right into the muscles and we're, we're encouraging lean muscle, either maintenance or development. And what that's going to do is the more muscle you have and the more healthy that muscle is, you're actually going to become naturally more and more insulin sensitive um, because the, the health and the quantity of your muscle mass is actually going to require um, more carbohydrates being sucked into that muscle mass. So just that alone is going to be is going to allow you to eat more and more carbs over time. And, and that's really an important concept is when I'm designing an exercise and a nutrition program, I'm not necessarily thinking just about six weeks or 12 weeks. I want the results in that shorter time frame, but I'm thinking longer term. I'm thinking, you know, 
what am I building for 12 weeks, two months, six months down the road? What kind of machinery am I building inside my body to make it easier and easier and easier for me to either lose weight or maintain the kind of body that, that I've built? And the more insulin sensitive I can make my kind of like general system, the easier it's gonna be for me to either continue moving towards my goals or maintain the kind of body that I've built. So, so that's really important. Um, the other thing is, uh, so, so on the days where you're resistance training, that would be the day that I would put more carbohydrates. Um, and specifically, if you wanna get even more optimal, after like the, the period directly after your workout until about like an hour or so after your workout is kind of like the optimal spot to be eating carbohydrates because like your muscles are just so thirsty for them. Um, and I think that's probably something that a lot of people have heard. And, and then finally, um, I generally recommend at least one day or for some people, if you're more like prone to fat gain from carbohydrates, at least one meal a week where I, I, I tend to shy away from cheat meals because that cheat psychologically, it, I, I mean, I've seen people really go off the rails with it, but I call it a good carb day or a good carb meal. So once a week, um, just let yourself carb up um, and, and not with necessarily a lot of junky stuff, not with like a lot of processed sugars and things like that, but more with like sweet potatoes, maybe some pasta, white rice and stuff like that. So basically you're gonna allow your, your leptin levels to come back up. Um, you're gonna allow yourself a psychological break and you're also gonna replenish all your, um, your muscle glycogen so that you, you can work hard for the week to come. Um, and then finally, one last thing I'm gonna talk about with regards to carbs is, like I said, I don't generally um, uh, subscribe to cheats, you know, like these days where you just get to eat whatever you want. But I do generally tell people, leave yourself 10% margin of error. Cause I mean, we're not, we're not ascetics. We're not living in a cave somewhere. We have friends. We go out. We have, we have social times. We have cravings that you know just hit us. So don't beat yourself up for you know having a dessert after your meal when you go out with friends, or having a beer with friends, or you know whatever you want to do. Give yourself that ten percent of leeway, and that's more of a psychological thing than anything else. Perfect. That's some really good advice. Um, how about talk about um, the kind of body weight growth specifically? And I couldn't help to notice, but there was a lot of case studies and testimonials that you had. Let's talk about how many people that it's actually affected. Uh, the, the body weight burn program itself, uh, there have been about uh, just over 10,000 people go through it. Oh. Um, yeah. And then, like, since, since I started online, I think. Um, up to around like 86,000 people have gone through um, one of the programs that, that I've done or others. So, I mean, it's cool. I've, I've been, a, been able to touch a lot of people's lives with this stuff. That's really cool, Adam. Congratulations. Yeah, that. thanks. I mean, it's always uh, exciting and motivating uh, as, a, as a trainer, um, however you see yourself, strength and conditioning coach, you know, just fitness coach. You name it, it's always a motivating thing to experience, and that's just awesome right there. Just think about that if you're listening to this. 10,000, probably 10,000 plus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. So once again, uh, I know that you're busy, Adam. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to go ahead and kind of conclude with this. Is there anything else that you wanted to bring up or big, maybe one tip that you could just throw out there for the, all the Lean Body Movement community? Like you have one thing, one habit that you do on a regular basis, more important than any others, what one would that be? Yeah, you know, I think I'm just going to give a, a kind of a mental tip um, because there's nutrition and there's there's training, but really if you think about it, like at least half of your success is more like the mental game and being able to stick to whatever you decide to do. Um, and, and the one tip that I think is invaluable is to measure not to measure forward to your ideal, but to measure backward to where you've come from. Because what happens is 
the more progress you make, like you've got this idealized version of yourself in your head when you start off on your journey, right? You know, I wanna look like this. Well, you start making some progress and all of a sudden that image in your head, it gets a little bit further away. You imagine yourself a little bit leaner, a little bit stronger, a little bit whatever, more than when you originally started. And no matter how much progress you make, that kind of ideal version of yourself keeps getting farther and farther off in the distance. It's always on the horizon. But if you take some time to look backwards, you'd be like amazed by how much progress that you make. And that's one of the reasons I really um, encourage people to take photos and measurements as they go. Because when you look back, that's really what's motivating is to say, oh wow, look, you know, my belly hangs out a lot less over my pants than it did th two weeks ago. You know, stuff like that is motivating. Whereas if you're always looking at that idealized version of yourself on the horizon, it's kind of depressing because you'll never get there. It's always a work in progress. That's, that's really cool that you bring that up because we talk about a lot about kind of internal kind of drive and kind of mindset um, kind of basis and how really overlooked that is. I mean, it's just kind of interesting. I mean, there will never be a physical change without a mental change. And yeah. I think uh, that's a big thing that you bring up. So thank you for that. Uh, can never hear that enough, you know. So once again, um, where can we find you? Once again, you mentioned bodyweightcoach.com, but you know, bodyweightburn.com. You know, How about um, anything else, any, anywhere else? You know, or would you just direct us back to kind of bodyweightcoach.com? I, I think if you go there, bodyweightcoach.com, um, there are links to everything from there. So bodyweightcoach.com or bodyweightburn.com, they're kind of linked. There's navigation at the top. You can go back and forth between the two. And... Um, yeah, you'll find the Facebook page there. You'll find tons of articles, videos. Um, you can, uh, what, what's our YouTube page? I don't even know. Hold on a sec. Um, but even from bodyweightcoach.com, like you'll find a video of us on YouTube. You can go there. It's, um, the, the, the YouTube page is Shapeshifter Guys. So okay. if, you, if you want to go to our YouTube page, you can find cool. it there. But yeah, I, I just started, I mean, bodyweightcoach.com. It's easy to remember and everything else you can find from there. Cool. Or you can always Google Adam Steer. <laughs> I think you'll get a lot from that too. Yeah, I don't know uh, what you find if you do that, but so I should try that. Again, I should make, yeah, see, what, <laughs> see what actually comes up. Yeah, well, it's actually, I think, one of the top two is bodyweightcoach.com. So All right. <laughs> uh, well, so... Thanks again, Adam. It's a pleasure being on the call with you today. I'm sure we all greatly appreciate it. And we, I've already learned uh, quite a bit from your uh, kind of rationale and your perspective. And like I said, uh, it's the foundational things that are important. And I like that you brought up, especially that you can't really, you can't really, um, pin, you can't even really stick at, you know, and find a needle in a haystack when you're talking about nutrition. You got to look at the kind of the big picture. And yeah. I think that's a big thing you brought up. So thanks again, Adam, for being on the call with us today. And I'm going to go ahead and sign off. This is Jason from LeanBodyMovement.com with Adam Steer. We'll talk to you guys very soon.